Nigeria is a country which is richly blessed in human and natural resources. The amount of human talent that we have flowing in this country cannot be quantified at all. And it is in celebration and realizing this quantum of knowledge that we have in Nigeria that we welcome you to another beautiful time on Executive Discuss coming to you on the network service of the NTA. My name is Olola Adeniji Adele. On this week's episode of the program, I am in the home of a woman of substance. She is ageless. She is beautiful. She started from a very young age to impact the society positively from the theater. She is a theater practitioner. She's a cosmetologist. She's a model, a broadcaster. Yes, a broadcaster. So for the purpose of this discussion, I must get my tenses right. No room for any errors because there's somebody here who's going to be pulling my ears if I get anything wrong. Please join me as we welcome to Executive Discuss from her home here live in Lagos on the network service of the NTA, the ageless, the delectable, the beautiful, and the talented Taiwo Ajayi Lyset OOM. How are you, mums? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you too. You're getting it all right there. You're ticking all the boxes. Wow. Thank you very much. That's a good one for me. Thank you for having me on your program. Thanks, ma'am. It's a great privilege. Thank you. introduction I said you're a limited edition and um, it's not because I want to uh, make you feel good about yourself or anything but it's because I know that we don't make them as good as you are anymore. Wow. Yes. What wow. high praises. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well that is a definition of a woman, a modern woman, a Nigerian woman. Mm, We're Nigeria. multi-dimensional. Fantastic. It, we are. We don't really fully appreciate ourselves. Mm. You said I'm, uh, I'm this, that, and the other, and a cosmetologist. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure you knew that I was also in business. Yes. That I'm a, uh, I'm a, a, pro, a school proprietor. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, over there on the wall, you'll see uh, some award certificate from the advertising practice Practic yes practice. yes so, you were into advertising public relations and the work consultancy yes I mean, handling international companies like total john holt michelin many of this uh, the, many of these uh, things that i've done uh, uh, are part of the things people don't even know about me okay i'm, I'm quite happy get... enough that i am known as an actor i mean you can't beat that <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will definitely get to, you know, those things that uh, people do not know about you. But for proper clarity and for people to really understand um, the quality of individual that I have seated here with me, I want you to please take us through your early years, where you were born, um, schools you attended, how it all started. Yeah, I was born here in Lagos. I'm an Awuri. Yes. Uh, I'm a Lagosian. I'm, I'm a daughter of the soil, so to speak. Mm. Uh, and I attended Mount Carmel Convent School around the corner, the Ibutimeta East mm. Lagos. And then I went to Methodist Girls High School. Uh, and then I went to Europe. And the, I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, but I didn't have the wherewithal. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, the story of my getting to Britain itself uh, is, is uh, epic. Wow. But uh, I got there and I started night school. I decided that the best thing to do uh, was to continue on the way, uh, the way I had been doing here before I even traveled, which was to learn uh, typing. Because okay. in those days, you're either a nurse or a teacher, teacher. or a secretary. Or secretary. Uh, so I thought I'd be a secretary. So I was learning to type, some way of trying to get a job and uh, have an earning. So I started, the minute I landed in Britain, I, I, uh, I enrolled uh, at um, an evening class. And so I was learning typing and I went to Pit Pitman's College also. Mm. It was my mm. college where I studied uh, to be a secretary. I got a job at the civil, in the civil service at the post office mm. branch of the civil service, Gresham Street, City of London. Uh, I just applied. I saw an advertisement and I applied and the, I, I was successful. And the first thing they did when they recruited people like that, they sent them to school, no. which was God sent. You know, as I said, no, no wherewithal to yes. do anything. And uh, uh, there is a God, you know, uh, without even being religious at all. There is somebody looking after us mm. and, and has a purpose for us. for us. I don't want to start philosophizing and preaching, but this is how it se uh, seemed to me. So here I was uh, uh, running around by myself and I applied for this job and fate uh, decided that I get to that particular job. And they first of all sent you to a, a month's training. Hmm. Rigorous. We checked in at was it eight o'clock or whatever it is to five. Wow. Every day, and then then the, you got back and then they assigned you first of all as recruits like that. We were put in the typing pool. Okay. So we worked for various departments, and then periodically advertisements uh, on, uh, will appear on the notice board saying there's a course for this. I went. Mm. I would join. So we were doing typing and shorthand. Shorthand. And I like, you know, the texts that we were typing and the texts that they were dictating to us uh, uh, <clears throat> to write down and transcribe, they came from all manner of places, scientific, mathematics, all sorts of things, philosophy. So I had a thorough education just going to these classes mm, mm, mm. Uh, which further whetted my appetite about reading on the, all the subjects that they were yes. uh, they were telling us which is why i'm very particular about people being curious about what they're doing being being uh, uh, in particular in the way they do things mm. they say the devil is in the in the detail mm, in, yes, the in the detail so you really have to look after the detail. So uh, it's the way where I learned how to dot my I's and cross, cross my T's. Fantastic training. Mm. And it'll, it'll be with me all my life. And so periodically we went to, to I went to these courses. And I took that as my own university, uh, uh, you know, higher education anyway. So as you came out, if, uh, next, you were assigned to various departments and uh, assigned to directors' offices. Mm. And I moved on and moved up and moved up like that until I was working in, uh, in the minister's office, Postmaster wow. General. Wow. And until then, I moved to the chairman of the post office, Lord Halls. It's magical. Mm. It's pretty amazing about keeping your eyes open and your ears yes. uh, uh, really uh, uh, open and alert to opportunities. Uh, opportunities, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't hand come it and drop them on, the, on your laps. You have to choose. Yes. And I, I'm fascinated because <laughs> the only thing I knew at that age uh, then was that I wanted to get somewhere. I didn't know about anything that uh, uh, you threw at me, anything that was going, I was ready to grab and you and gobbled it all up. Yeah, and I did. And I try to say this to people. 
Don't take anything for granted. Don't overlook anything. Don't just do anything without actually thinking about it. You got to pay attention. You got to be on the yes. you got to be on the alert to various things that's happening to us. That's how I got to England and I started this journey that's here now. And as uh, lunchtime, I remember lunchtime, the post office had a huge library of all sorts of things, fine arts, you know, fiction, history, of, and instead of going for lunch, I'm in the library, hmm. you know, gobbling up Michelangelo or Da Vinci mm. or whatever it is. Nobody is setting me any example. So. Yeah. I just wanted to know the paintings, the artists, yes. the this, that, and the other, the philosopher Hegel, and all the, these things that I didn't know what I was going to do with, with these things. All of that information you were gaining, yeah. knowledge. The same with music. I started, and I had people. When you go, when you're like that, then you have people come into your life who would further bless you. And my bosses will come, some, some of my bosses, invariably, their, their book has come out. Taiwo, have you read this book? Wow. And then they present me the book. Till today, I always believe that if anybody gives me a book, they must love me. Mm. It's not a jewel, piece of jewelry yeah. that gets me going. Yes. The people who just decided they read a book or they found something and they drew my attention to it or sent that present to me, I, I value them mm. because of what they had made of you, of my life, of opening my life to so Omar Kayam. Mm. There's a book of poetry, Egyptian uh, uh, poet. poetry. Uh, 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 Omar Kayam, you've got to read this. You got, this is how I got my, uh, my education. Wow. Partly how I got my education, uh, being so curious. It's important to be curious in life and to be alert, to always be alert, uh, uh, to, to listen. Uh, so people helped me like that. And I was moving, I was moving until, until there was a time I was, it was proposed that I should go and work at, uh, in number 10 Downing Street. Downing Street, wow. When Harold Wilson was, uh, mm. uh, was prime minister. Prime minister. That's when I thought, if I got lost in the diplomatic, I ain't going to come to Nigeria again. I love the life that I have grown up in. Hmm. The, the, the life that God dumped in my lap, or the universe, or whoever, my creator dumped in my life and said, here you are, take it and Go run with it. With it. Uh, because it, it obviously knows what kind of child I was, and, and that was it. So that, that's part of my journey. Hmm. And then I moved and moved, and every, every vacation that I had, I went to do a course, okay. one course or the other. Uh, and I think right now it shows in the tapestry, it's the tapestry of my, uh, of my life. I did this, I did, I did that, that, like cosmetology. Yes. That, you know, people make up. Uh, uh, this makeup business and fashion and whatever, uh, makeup cosmetology by itself developed from Africa. We taught, we taught the world how to make mm. faces. This isn't borrowed from, uh, from, uh, from Europe. Europe. We taught them face painting and everything. Mm. That's what fascinated me with that. But it's sold to us now as though it's it's, it's so from Europe, yes. Look at every ceremony that we have, traditional ceremonies, all around Africa. Yes. Look at the paintings. Look There's at the a lot of face painting, body painting, body works. Yeah. Artworks on Fantastic. our body. Fantastic. Europeans took it and put it on its head. Hmm. So I was fascinated by that. You know, uh, we can change because uh, the idea of uh, uh, face painting is about mask. Mm. Mm. It's mm. in our culture. So when we say uh, cosmetology, they, they think it's just the fashion, the no. painting. The, my, my take on it is quite different. Yes, I want to be able to do it myself and know why people are doing it and what it does to this particular face and what, you, what story you're telling. 
we're doing the face because exactly. you can, as you know, you can completely radically change your exactly. face. Exactly. You can wear a mask. Africans have it. That's the root. That is my root hmm. <laughs> to that. That's my understanding of what, uh, what makeup and cosmetology is. Yes. Uh, and so it's fascinating when people make up now and everybody looks the same. That's not the idea. It's to create individuality, identity. You look at uh, uh, the, the, the traditional ceremonies, East Africa, Africa uh, uh, Nigeria, and uh, you see what they're doing. I'm mm. still looking at them. You see what they're doing. It's fascinating. Yes. It's beautiful. It's creative. People think it's primitive. Of course it's primitive. It's inventive. They invented it. Mm. And a lot for us to learn from, from, from that. The same with hair. We're not following through on all of that, all of that now in our, modern, in our modern age. But the, be that as it may, that was part of my journey. Until I met somebody and I, I wanted to uh, uh, take them for coffee. And I went there and a producer saw me and said, was I an actor? Understandably, at the level I was working, I had to dress not to kill, corporate, mm. but absolutely sharp and elegant. Mm. Because, of course, I've also gone to learn about modeling. Modeling. I was a model in England. So I would come out uh, uh, like a model. So he thought, uh, Bill Gaskell, thought that I was an actor. They were, they, it was the premiere for Lisho Inca's Lion and Lion the Jewel. And the Jewel. And he thought I was an actor and, thought, and I asked whether I was an actor. I said, no, I came to take somebody for coffee. And he said, well, would I be interested? Well. Why not give it a try? Exactly, because ev every uh, vacation I had, I did something. Yes. So I thought, well, this is maybe something I, I'm so supposed to do for my vacation mm. this year. And we opened. They'd already finished casting. I was just a village girl. Mm. We opened, and as they say, the rest is history. History. Because people then started approaching me to say, well, who are my agents? Mm. You know, this, that, and that. I didn't have an agent. Remember? Because you had no business. How I you mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I acquired an agent. One of the people in the audience was Elizabeth Allen Jeffries. I wonder whether she's still alive today. Mm. Uh, she is the CEO of Premier Management. She proceeded to sign me on there and then. Wow. I think there's magic in life. I think it's incredible, mm. uh, the, the magic that life is, the mystery and the magic. But we are too busy running around so much that I don't think we are aware. We'll take time. Yeah, we're not, to we're not aware to see how things are working in our lives. That obviously, there are things that are happening because even even a misstep is not by chance. Mm. There's, There's a statement is being made there to you to say, "Check, hold it there." Mm. So you can you can break down and say, hey, "Why did this happen to me?" Or you can say, "Well, what's this all about? What am I learning from this? What is yeah? What am I supposed to learn from this?" Now, you had an opportunity to go head on and not sort of remember Nigeria again. You had an opportunity to operate at perhaps the highest level in the UK because going into 10 Downing Street, working in the Prime Minister's office would have been at the zenith of your career. But you took a step back and possibly had a second thought what was it that gave you that confidence that losing that job or doing away with that opportunity there were bigger ones for you ahead and that you know you should come back to Nigeria home is bigger 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 than anywhere else but I some could... people will see it as you know yes they can make their home anywhere Yes, I can't make my home everywhere, but home is where the heart is. Yes. And anywhere else, I'll only be a stranger. Mm. I'll be an alien. 
why should I live my life being an alien just because uh, I got money in the bank or I got status? The status is nothing unless actually you belong, unless actually you have, uh, uh, you belong somewhere. And, uh, and, and people own you somewhere. That's the word I'm looking for. Nigeria owns me. Hmm. Lock, stock, and barrel. Barrel. And everything else we're doing really should be about Nigeria, about who we are, about where we are. I don't want to sound grand about, about development, but that's how it is. It is the people of that country that grow the country, that develop that. So what's the whole point? I am ideologically against all this relocation business that, that is happening. You sell everybody, sell everything, sell your mother and everything to get money, to go and put yourself in the second slavery. Mm. It does make sense to me. Why not make things better here? Particularly, it's so incongruous, particularly since the places we're going to, which seem so developed, the resources they're using to develop themselves come uh, from, from here. here. Okay. It doesn't make sense to me. So it doesn't make sense to me, however high, highly I'm pleased over there. If I was to go and work in Buckingham Palace, I would still be some appendage or some. That's no big deal to me. And at that age, I, I was aware of that because that's how we were raised. You went there to learn to Ilela Bosimioku to go and to learn something that might be useful to your country and come. And come back home. And that's not peculiar to us. Everybody goes around. What do you think, what do you think Europeans, uh, how do you think Europeans appeared here? Why did they come here? They wanted to see something and bring whatever is here to here take back. back. There. So why are we doing it the, the, the route the, different The way? other way around. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand myself. Okay, so the, there was this thing from Nigeria that kept pulling you back. Yeah. And you knew you had to come back home. But even at the time you were going, you were rather young. And um, I'm sure it must have been quite challenging for you there. How were you able to fi find your feet? How were you able to hold your own? out there in the middle of nowhere you find your own support if you're raised well actually you're raised to be independent yes you're raised if you if you that's why they say raise your child well so that when you're thrown out into the world they'll they'll find their bearings, their bearings. because the, the the way you've trained them will help them survive for instance when i started having uh, success uh, uh, in show business. Frank Sinatra hmm. and his crew wanted to appropriate me to take, to take me to America. My background enables me to say, ah, I don't know these people. I know their lifestyle, they're successful, hmm. it's fantastic, and well, yeah, most young girls want to do this. But I don't like to go into a place where I don't know how to get out of. Mm. And I did not see how I'm l likely to be able to get out. If things went ar awry, mm. I wasn't interested. Again, your background. Matters a lot. Again, training. Again, family. Which we're losing. I'm, I keep emphasizing yes. this because this is what is ailing us right now. We have abandoned uh, the raising of our children into the hands of schools to teach us. And nannies. And nannies. They had inculcated all the values they wanted us to have so that we can, we can survive anywhere, anywhere. Whatever your gender. Because I'm saying this, I'm a woman. That reigns exactly. through in my head. Remember whose child you are. Yes. If I'm found here, what am I going to tell somebody to tell them I'm doing here? I'm doing here. Quietly is always there. 
So the signposts are there. They put them in your head. You are bringing. You do so. So it wasn't a big deal. It was just natural to say that no, that's not the direction I, w I do want a career and I do want to be successful. And but that if I go that way, I'm likely to get lost there. Yeah. I like to I like to know where I am. It's the same reason I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't party. Or you know, Shobi is known, mm. known for all these live yeah. parties. I don't know what a nightclub is. I'm not interested. I don't want to know what they're doing there. Because anything that doesn't have some kind of uh, structure, I'm not interested. And does not add value doesn't have value to your life, that you can see. So I'm not interested. And if you're busy working on yourself, you are pretty jealous of anything that could pull that down. Yes, or cause distractions of for course. you. So I'm never for distractions. And that's a function of your upbringing, your it's, background. Yeah. Now you, have, you, you went into an individual. Ah. It was pretty shocking why people were running after me. I didn't know why. Okay. Because you know how I came in. Somebody saw me and said join and I joined and everybody is running up and down and saying, my God. And I said to myself. What is happening here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm fooling people. Mm. They must not find out that I'm a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> That's another Nigerian thing then. Yes. We learn about everything. We want to be experts, unlike today. They must not know that I don't know about this thing. Oh, I must go and I learn. must go learn it. And so I threw myself. That was my reaction to that. Mm. I threw myself to learning. Immediately got myself an acting coach, Zoe Riches. I went to City Literary Institute, where you can have night classes and day classes. But I, since I was working, I had nine classes. I went to learn to play the piano. I went to learn to play the, uh, uh, the, guitar. the guitar. Everything that had to do with show business, I had to. But above all else, I had to train my voice. I had to learn about the technique of acting. I read prodigiously. That was my, the, the typical reaction of Tai Wajai. Was to say, eh, they're running around. Ah, I fool. <laughs> uh, 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 they don't know I'm a fraud, uh, and uh, they must never know no. that, that I'm a fraud. I, sh I can't fool them a second time. Yeah. But because immediately I, 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 the play opened, I was working at the BBC. Mm. I was, it, it, it happened so uh, uh, spectacularly that I can't even describe the, the horror of it. And so I, I went to the dance center. I was learning to dance, uh, uh, modern dance, modern jazz. Uh, uh, I had voice coaches, and then I went to learn at Guildhall School of Music and Drama, one mm. of the premier uh, uh, arts colleges, colleges in England. And more coincidental is the fact that you started out on a production that was based on the writings of somebody from your own country, yeah. a man who was making Nigeria, who was, is, and will always make Nigeria proud, Professor Wale Shoinka. That was my debut. How about that? Wow. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because, I mean, it just occurred to me. All these things work out. This is, this is the magic of, uh, I call magic of life, that you, we don't know anything about anything. We really don't know anything about anything, but we have to be a, a, a little bit more awake to what's happening. That happened because <laughs> uh, I'm deeply in love with Nigeria. So is it, when you, when you now look back, yes. is it any wonder that mm. if there is a God that he will arrange everything so that he's pointing the way that you should go? I should go. Even though I'm 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 walking the I'm walking the walk myself, mm. but I don't know where I'm work, walking. Yes. 
but I'm, I'm being moved. It's your long line shape. We do God's work. God's work. And, and so, as I said, I, I put all my resources into training myself. And I, you know, found myself at, at the BBC. With all this training, eventually I had my own program calling Nigeria from the BBC every mm. week. Wow. Magazine program. Wow. Wow. How about somebody who had not thought about entertainment or anything yes. like that? And just going head on into it straight yeah. away, being given that opportunity. Yeah. And people were picking me to do this and picking me to do that. Because, of course, you're, you're not doing it yourself. People are saying uh, uh, they trust you yes. with that and they trust you with that. And they're giving you this. So hard work does pay. It pays. It pays. Hard work pays. And you have been in this particular field for several decades. And you're still going strong. I know that um, there have been series of productions, nameless, countless productions that you have been a part of. Stage, theatre, even motion picture. Which of these holds dear for you? I, I smile because, you see, I, I, when people ask me this, and I'm not being facetious at all. The best is yet to come. I'm chasing, I'm still chasing the best. I'm still chasing what it is that, that I know I'll be giving to do. Mm. I still think the challenge is still coming. Mm. I don't think I've done. Yeah, I've done work, yeah. But your best is not there yet. I don't think so. The best is yet to come. It sounds trite and sounds maybe a, a little bit precious. It isn't at all precious. Because every script that I get is a challenge. Because I don't have an idea how it's going to turn out. So I don't have, a, I don't have time to feel, uh, uh, what, what do you call it, self-satisfied about anything. But it's very particular area, any particular genre in filmmaking, in storytelling, that you feel okay, herein lies my strength. Maybe it's the stage, maybe it's in, um, you know, even the motion pictures. Stage is the best place to be. Hmm. Stage is like what we're doing now. No it's, take twos. It's organic. It's not a... Uh, uh, Filtered. Uh, uh, yeah. Take it again. No. There's no second take. No second takes in, in stage. It's there, it's there. Now, that's the ultimate in technique and knowledge. Hmm. Movies, you can take 20 takes, 40 takes and whatever and still not get it right. You are not allowed that on stage. Hmm. You have to get your act together, so to speak, when you're on stage. Ironically, well, maybe it's not ironic, the amount of work you gave to your part will tell on stage. Mm -hmm. That's why they say there are no small parts, only small actors. Hmm. There are no small parts, only actors. Hmm. Because hmm. they give you a small part, you can make something. You can make something humongous from it. It's happened to me before. In my beginning, one of my biggest uh, uh, sh shows, it was at the Dublin International Festival. Uh, and it was a play written about Patrice Lumumba, mm. Patrice Murderous Lumumba. Angels. Hmm. Uh, by one of the people who knew what was happening at the United Nations. It was, it was Assistant Secretary General to, to da, da, Doug Hammarskjöld okay. in those days. And they murdered Patrice, Patrice Lumumba. Lumumba. And I was play, playing Patrice Lumumba's wife, Pauline. Wow. I had no lines. He had a, he had a Belgian mistress. She played mm -hmm. big role, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was the little wife, and they came to tell me that my husband had been murdered. Mm. And, I, and they don't have any parts for me. And I said, could I do a dirge for him? Mm. I was very political in those days, very active. And so I did a dirge. Of a, it was, it's about a song that when we're living in Abe, uh, Butemeta, Apapa Road, 
Next door, there's a fence. Next door where some actors, Yoruba actors, used to rehearse. I never mm. lay eyes on oh, them, yeah. ever. But I used to, uh, the other hear side, them. I used to hear them. Hmm. And this woman used to sing this song, hmm. What will you not see? An actor true and true. That is the ageless, the timeless, the iconic Taiwo Ajayi license. I think on that dirge, we should take a breather here to perhaps get to meet one or two people that this icon has worked with. I mean, you see it. You've seen raw talent, raw beauty here. Let's take this breather here. This is a very humane person, very um, humble in spite of all of our achievements. And she's very accommodating. She's so vast in her knowledge that when she says things, people, people tend to take offense. They're oh, why is she talking like that? Why? She's not the typical woman that you say because she's in the middle of men that you want her to keep quiet. She doesn't keep quiet. In fact, she leaves the talk because she's sure of her content and she knows that she can deliver it. And she does that. You can't hold a debate with her if you have not read on that subject. Please don't open your mouth. Mrs. Lysa is one of the most enlightened beings I know, the strongest, one of the strongest emotionally that I know. She's gone, she's been up and down and she carries it with grace. She embodies what a quintessential actor should be, from her work ethic, even to the way she speaks, to the way she speaks, how she carries herself, how she puts her all, immerses herself in her work till date is still an amazement to me when she gets a script on how she how she sinks herself into it. So I I believe the creative industry has a lot to learn from her. If they've not learned it now, they have a lot to learn from her. Because she's one of the most experienced actors across all stages. As an actor, I would always love to work with a, a strong female actor like uh, Taiwo Ajayi Lyset. Uh, I met her a long time ago at one of these festivals in Scotland, uh, the Edinburgh Festival, and it was nice. And then when she came back to Nigeria, we had opportunities of playing uh, opposite each other. One very, very successful one was The Divorce by Wale Ogunyemi, uh, which mm -mm, was a sellout. Glad to know you're still here with us. The program is Executive Discuss, coming to you on the network service of the NTA. I'm sure that before we took that break to meet up, some people that have worked with the iconic Taiwo Ajayi Laiseto and it got, um, things got kind of heated up here. Yes, because even I, you know, I had some, okay, let's not go there. <laughs> now, Misty, <laughs> oh gosh, how did you get into that? We were here just chatting, having fun, and you got into another realm. Yeah. What happened? How did you do that? That's acting. It's called emotion memory. Emotion memory. Emotion memory. 
an ability to connect to some emotion in the past and bring it alive. Make it believable, because you have to feel it, because it's a memory you're tapping in, yes. into. The combination of listening to those women, uh, that woman singing that song, and the event that I am trying to use this for. Uh, and I saw Lumumba as a warrior. Yes. Now, I had no lines at all in this play. Well, with this dirge? Yeah. The, my, uh, a man who wanted to marry me, Mr. Lysett, flew all the way from London to Dublin for the first night. This was the first night. Oh. And he was in the audience. And after the, after the show, he took me to dinner and he said, I have to come to a decision. Wow. That he knew that I was making money from all that, but that I must concentrate on acting. Which is your calling. He said, because when I got on stage, he said, and I gave that dirge, if a pin dropped, he said, they will hear it. Gosh. He said, you are an actor. I know you, didn't, you don't think you are an actor, but you are an actor. Through I think you through. should take it seriously. This, this, is is what it. You, this is what you should be doing. And you are doing all these things fine, but this is your calling, he said to me. Next to acting, the other thing that is uh, uppermost in my mind is Thomas Lysett. I don't think he was human. I think he was, <laughs> I think he was sent to me. He was sent to me to further direct my steps. And when he finished his job, he left. So he, did, he, doesn't, he hasn't died to me, he's alive. He's very much alive, yes, because I mean, every time you think of what, how far you have come, your remember. journey, you remember him. He also said, you don't have any business being in England. He's an Englishman. No? Mm -hmm. You're doing this, your people don't know you. Hmm. Go, go back. Return home. You go home. Your people must know what you're doing. Hmm. And so you and returned came with, with you. That was a man that Great really man. loved you. Oh, have I, have I known love? Have I known love? I'm sure if we go into that <laughs> again, you will get into one of these words, yes. So I wouldn't let you go there. So you returned to Nigeria. Mr. Lysett came back with you. And um, you honed your skills some more. Now I must ask you, what makes a difference between the way our craft is practiced here in Nigeria and how it's practiced in the UK, having uh, been opportune to practice at both levels? It's problematic here. Uh, talent is one thing. We got, we're awash with, with talent. Mm. But discipline... Mm and technique and knowledge, learning about it, not taking it for granted, not thinking that everybody can act, everybody can do this. Yeah, life itself is a stage, and all of us, as Shakespeare said, we're actors in it. But the tendency here in Nigeria is for everybody to feel that they can act. Mm. And so the idea that there is a great deal to learn about being an actor, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. That disappoints me. And it shows in everything we're doing. So everybody assumes they connect. Hmm. There is nothing to, to it. To learn. Yeah. We're sitting here talking about acting. You're telling me about all the subtleties and the nuances that you talk. Who cares about all, all that in Nigeria? I'm an actor. I can make up. I got big bars. I got big this hmm. and waste like this. You see what all, all, all the uh, Instagram actors are doing? Those are the actors. Those are the celebs. 
Hmm. That's therefore the generality of people, that's what they think actors are. Hmm. And acting is an intensely intellectual occupation. I agree. It's about making the world. When, you, when I saw you earlier and said, Kusho Lua, it's about doing a job of work. It is a serious business without making too big a point for it. I think it's important. This country will change dramatically if we were to infuse it with some kind of philosophical, moral construct. And discipline. Discipline. Professionalism. This is where we could introduce all that I'm saying I like to think is what professionalism is about. All right, so much of the hard talk. And uh, because I know that um, the uh, creative industry is, very, is something that you hold dear to your heart. So let's take a breather here. Because um, it's also important that while we're having this conversation with you, um, we also get to talk to people who are with you on the home front. What my mother has brought to the industry is a lot of seriousness, background seriousness, preparation. Most people are not aware the amount of time that people put into what they see as the end product. What they see as the end product is, that's all they admire. It's very difficult for people to accept or even conceptualize the work behind the scene. That is my mother. She will put in the work. She had already put in the work. That is what she has contributed. She wants to be the best that she can be. She will study. She will research. She will practice. She would learn from young and old, and that is how you keep getting better and better and better. But it is not fashionable what she does. The work she puts in behind the scene is not fashionable. There is hardly anybody that will propagate, let us read. Most people will propagate, let us speak. She will propagate, have you read? Have you found out alternative opinion about something? So it is the combination of work and more work and additional work. The end product is what you see as my mother's excellence. Okay, I won't say anything at this point. I think I'll just leave you to judge for yourself from what we've heard about Taiwo Ajayi Lyset. And in continuation of our conversation, you are a woman who knows her style. She loves to look good. I mean, look at you looking ageless, tireless. What dictates your fashion sense? Respect for others above all this. That's funny, isn't it? You don't dress to shock anybody. You dress for yourself. If you respect yourself, you respect other people, you dress decent. And elegance is simplicity. That's the definition to me of elegance. Simplicity. No, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. You dress for yourself for comfort and to respect others because they're looking, they have to look at you, so they don't have to be offended because your boobs are falling out and you were looking at your undies and, and, and all that nonsense. And do you, don't you see how, I, no, you dress just decent. Decency is of the essence and carrying your, and that's another thing. All the training that I have of carrying yourself, and in Africa, we know how to carry ourselves anyway. All right. Um, Taiwa Jailai said, O-O-N.
you've done so much for this country and I must say thank you to you. I mean, on behalf of those of us who really appreciate what you have done. But before I let you go, because you're a very deep and philosophical person and um, you've schooled me thoroughly today. But I want you to speak to the consciousness of Nigerians on the way to go. Because obviously we seem to have missed the way somewhere. We seem to have lost our direction at some point in time. Speak to the consciousness of Nigeria. Back to, ori to the original African philosophy. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Do you know that? The yeah. concept of the extended family. That's, what, that's who we were. Kindness to one another. Do you see kindness around anyone? If there is no kindness to one another, if you don't love your neighbor as yourself, it's not biblical. People think this is brought to us by Christianity. That's and reinforced it. But that's what African culture is about. When, when the family member says, well, let me look after these two children for you, not just because of money. They may want to raise that child in a way that maybe your hands are too full and we take that your attention so we can give attention to that person. So they raise these children. And we don't, in our, in, in, in our culture, nobody, uh, we both think we don't know who our mothers are because everybody is our mother, everybody is our father. Are we still in the same thing? Nowadays, your children get married, they may not even tell you they're getting married. Now they have children. Do they tell you they're going to name their children? In those days, your, your father or, or, or his brother, if he has an elder brother, will name that child. Yes. All this connectedness that we had, all this love me as I love you and all that, do we have it? It's what I'm dying for. That's why I'm raising my own family of... Uh, uh, they're not related to me, but they're my family. The family of man, I call us. But that's African culture. It's not a philosophy that Europe gave us. It is something we gave Europe. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Respect for one another. We don't have respect for one another anymore. Do you see the way we talk to one another? Do you see the carnage? This is the nonsense that's going on in the, on the road when you get into the car. And this is, a, this is a roundabout. First of all, we don't know the highway code. Nobody went to school because they just brought the driving license to them in, in the house. You see how we ourselves ruin our society? So we're going. I want to go. You want to go, that one wants to go. The idea that, oh, after you, do we, do we practice it? What do we practice? We all converge on this, and we sit down there, looking at one another and abusing one another and saying there's a gridlock. And when you are able to leave that place, you get there, there's nothing there's on the nothing. road. That's Nigeria. That's what we've done to ourselves. Think about the other person. Life is not about you. you alone. It's about the collective. It's about everybody. Thank you so much. The delectable, ageless Taiwa <laughs> Jai license. Thank you so much. I mean, 80 and still going strong. We wish you the very best of luck Thank and you. many more years in good health. Amen. I have had a very deep and soul searching conversation on executive discourse today with the ageless, the tireless, elegant Taiwo Ajayi Lyset O-O-N. And she has bared her mind. She has spoken deeply to our consciousness and I have been thoroughly schooled. I wouldn't know if you have enjoyed this conversation because that is where we draw the curtain on this week's episode of executive discourse which has come to you on the network service of the NTA. If indeed you have, why don't you keep a date with us next week, same station. You never can tell who my guest will be. But of course, one thing I know for sure is that we must keep a date 
because the Nigeria that we deserve and we desire can only be gotten from us. Let's do this again, same time, same station. I remain Ololadi Adini Jadeli. Bye-bye.